I'm Frank Boyd. I'm the sort of creative director of the Crossover Labs. Uh, I'm Heather Kroll. I'm the producer of the Crossover Labs. Crossover is um, a creative lab. It's a lab in the sense that what we try to do is to experiment with different forms of media and to invent future forms. We really believe that a really interesting way to stimulate new innovative projects that take on the whole, all the challenges of the digital media world right now and the new landscape and is to bring together people from different disciplines and bring together you know, the best of filmmakers, the best of television program makers, the best of games designers, web designers, some scientists, and then put them through a process that that really makes them get to know how each other works, who each other is, and how they might work together right here in this lab, but also in the future, to create innovative work. I'm Trina Garnett. I'm a writer and content producer by background, um, and I'm currently working uh, for an agency that specialises in internal communications, it's magazines and online. My name's Adam Russell, and I um, am a lecturer at the University of Derby. Although I haven't been doing that for very long, about 18 months ago I came out of a programming job in the uh, high-cost uh, UK computer games industry, by which I mean very large teams on big budget projects, taking two years to make and so on. My name's Yomi Ayeni, I'm creative director for Expanding Universe. We're a social entertainment company based in London. And um, we create alternate reality games, television shows, interactive experiences, things that blur the lines between reality and fiction. It's interesting actually, I'm currently in a group with two filmmakers and a psychologist making hardware, which is really interesting. We're both mentoring at the crossover event, so our role is to um, work with the participants, give them information that they need about areas that they're maybe not familiar with, and help them explore the new territory um, and each other's skill sets so they can experiment with new projects and new ideas while they're here. One of the big challenges with crossover is to help people who come from linear media backgrounds deal with interaction and particularly game design, which is a very particular discipline with a very particular set of skills and techniques that are needed. So Margaret and I particularly uh, help on looking at issues of game design and leading people through processes of interaction design. One of the real problems at the moment in getting innovation and in getting truly new forms in media is that people in television really don't understand what the web is capable of. They've got too much time, too much of their careers invested in understanding how to make a really compelling linear narrative that the whole world of what the design possibilities are of these new interactive media is something that remains a closed book to them. The same is true of people who work in the games industry, who absolutely understand how to make a compelling, interactive and sticky experience, but don't really understand how to develop a character or how to tell a compelling linear story. So what we're trying to do is get people to understand each other very quickly and learn about the possibilities of, of the other media now available to them. Anyone who comes from old media has to try and get to grips with new media because I think uh, from an economic point of view and from a creative point of view, uh, it's not really an option not to get involved and not to understand what the potential is. I've commissioned cross-platform projects for the BBC, which I did for quite a long time, so I have a, a lot of understanding of what kind of what people want, in a sense, or what people will use, but no notion of how, what, how something like that gets produced and what the issues are around production that are different to TV production, for example. Normally a lab goes for five days and that's a 24-hour you know, immersive experience for every single day of that, of that five days. We also do like to bring people to pretty nice hotels. They've got a great space, they've got good food, they're getting looked after, and we are going to make them work in in some cases people are being challenged to unlearn their almost the thing they've learned, you know, done for 20 years or something and that can be quite an uncomfortable zone so if you put them in a very comfortable space and look after them and then make them work hard with each other I think that's the other thing that people feel like they're all in it together. What we found is that it's, crossover is a fantastic way for people to make connections with people from other disciplines so the thing that really seems to endure is connections with people who have come from different fields. And in terms of making Britain a place where this kind of work is thriving, it's really important to build those connections so that people from these different disciplines understand the range of options out there, the range of collaborators that might be available to them. The people I'm mixing with here are really types of 
people who I would never normally get the opportunity to meet, who have completely different kinds of knowledge to my own, which I'm looking for, I'm seeking. And um, it's very exciting to be in that kind of environment. There's a real cross-fertilization that's happening there. Um, there's, there's an interdisciplinarity within this experience that is just incredibly rich for me. It's a great opportunity. Personally, for me, I think that's going to be incredibly useful. Because I suspect that I'll be able to take a lot away uh, individually about how to apply those techniques to how I do science and hopefully see if they work. And hopefully they will, and that'll be beneficial to me. It's a very selfish reason for getting a lot out of crossover. This is Thursday right now, and this is day four. People are putting together their ideas for the final pitch presentation tomorrow. So far, they've already been asked to pitch their projects to us twice. They come to us in a panel situation and pitch their project, no matter how embryonic, no matter how early days, it's an hour old, two hours, four hours old, pitch it, because the more you pitch, it, the better you get at understanding what your idea is yourself. There are two things about the pitching. One is based around an Ian Forster quote, um, which is, how do I know what I think until I see what I say? By requiring people to articulate their idea succinctly and clearly, it's the idea that gets better, not just the pitch. The second thing is the pitch at the end of the week, to which we invite visitors from broadcasters, from funding agencies. And that actually goes back to my days in theatre, which is, so it's really a piece of theatre, and by bringing in an audience, an audience that these people will care about, it raises their game, it, gets, it injects a sense of jeopardy, it gives them some adrenaline, and that actually also helps, it's nothing like a deadline for really focusing one's creativity and motivation. The knowledge curve I've experienced in the last three and a half days has been more accelerated and steeper than any experience I can remember having in the last four or five years. Over here, we given various prompts. In some cases, when you, when, you, when, when you look at the materials you've been given, there's no way in hell that you'd stumble across that sort of a concept in the real world. It's just so far out. But you also have to kind of work through that, get through your respective little idiosyncrasies and hang-ups on how you approach it, um, find common ground, then develop from there, get ready for it to be knocked down a few times, then build it up again. The product that we are developing is something I'm enormously excited about and has presented challenges to me that I would never encounter in my day-to-day -day life and have been enormous fun. Had you asked me before if I would ever have any interest in making a game for two to six years old, that's absolutely not. Um, and yet here I am working on this and enjoying the process, learning a great deal, and have become really passionate about this game now. I think we've put together an, an increasingly sophisticated s suite of tools which actually get people up a very steep learning curve, get them trusting each other and get them working together creatively very quickly. By Friday, most of these people feel like they've known each other for years. Together they have to jump off cliffs and trust each other. It's, it's been a really good week. I mean, it's, it's just interesting working with different people and being really pushed out of your comfort zone. There was no shortage of really great brains and the freeze on of their meetings from different fields here. There are really good ideas, really good thoughts, really good creative content in there. I was, I was impressed. What was most amazing for me was the breadth of the kind of understanding and the breadth of the research they've done in even looking at things like pricing in the market, scoping out other, you know, other kind of market competition and really getting a good handle on exactly where they sat in that market opportunity as well as being able to present something that was very compelling, engaging and gave a very, very good sense of what that product or service or project was. I think it just shows the power of bringing the kind of people together from different disciplines and how that just does create an amazing positive energy. Um, so amazing to see creativity from such different disciplines being unlocked.